All right, what'd you pull up there? Man, this is a big old lionfish right here. Look at that thing. Say, <laughs> mm, some good eating right here. And, uh... Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Forgotten Weapons. Not so much, well, today's a little bit different. About a year ago, I did a field to table video with some hog hunting down in Texas. And that was quite a lot of fun. And I really wanted to do it again, but I didn't want to make the content just all the exact same thing. You know, we did hogs, but deer, elk, it's all basically the same process. So what would be different? Underwater hunting. So we're down here in Pensacola, in Pensacola, to do some spearfishing. All right, so in order to properly figure out how to do this, I have found Brady Hale. And you're like the lionfish, or probably one of several lionfish. Definitely, definitely one of several. Um, I run a nonprofit called Ocean Strike Team. And Ocean Strike Team's mission is to take scuba divers and teach them how to hunt lionfish. Perfect. So, um, a couple quick things. First off, why lionfish? Like, why are we, we're gonna go out there and massacre as many of these things as we can find which doesn't really seem like the ecologically responsible thing to do, is it? It, it absolutely is. Quite the opposite, actually. So lionfish are an invasive species. Um, invasive species means that they're doing some type of harm to the environment. So in this particular instance, there's a fish that came over from the Indonesia area and were dumped into our oceans over here. So they're creating quite a problem with our ecosystem. Uh, they eat voraciously, um, they breed like crazy, and they pretty much don't have any predators whatsoever. So we kind of say they're Americanized. They come over here, they Ouch. eat a whole bunch, and they get fat. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> All right, and the good news, however, is we can eat them, right? Absolutely, they're quite tasty. So, uh, you know, one of the ways you can solve any problem with when it comes to food is get Americans to like the food. And so, uh, unfortunately for, for us, unfortunately for them, uh, they're very white, flaky, uh, non-fishy flavored meat. Um, they take on a lot of the spices and just a really, really good thing to eat. Oh, I'm excited to try some. We're gonna... I've yet to actually try one. Of them. I have to go shoot my own before I'm allowed to eat it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so now they are venomous. So right? correct. They're venomous, not poisonous. So the difference is uh, poisonous like blowfish or other things that have to be specially pre prepared. You have to ingest the poison uh, for it to harm you. Uh, this is more like a rattlesnake in that you have to be poked and so the venom gets gets in you and that's where it causes the issues. Not lethal, just pain. Correct, right. There's been no, no reported cases in the history of the world of a lionfish killing somebody with their venom. Um, although you feel like you want to die sometimes when you get poked because it definitely hurts. Uh, but there is no typically danger of um, killing. Okay, so in order to do this, we've got some special gear. Absolutely. So we're going to be using these guys, pole spears, right? Correct. So this is a pole spear, otherwise known as a Hawaiian sling. Uh, so it's based on kinetic energy. You have a big rubber band and a pointy side. Uh, put the pointy side away from people. And uh, the rubber band, you're going to stretch up. That's going to create that kinetic energy. And then you have the ability to just let go. And it's going to create that energy to, to shoot the fish. Uh, these have barbs on them. So they're pointy with a little bit of barb. So as you shoot the fish, it's gonna hold that fish onto there. And then, if you wanna hand me that, um, this is what we call a zookeeper. Um, so a zookeeper allows us to handle the lionfish without getting poked. So once we get the lionfish on our, on our uh, pole spear, we put it right into here, it's got a one-way valve that allows us to put the fish in there, and then that cone strips the fish off and it stays into this hard plastic case. So that way the spines can't penetrate that and we'll get poked. All right. Well, shall we go see if we can find some? Let's do it.
Now, this is actually the day before Brady giving me some instruction on the pole spear. This was actually a pretty easy thing to get the hang of. So, we do a little practicing shooting at a spot on the dirt on the bottom of the Pensacola Bay here. There we go. Now, one of the keys, really one of the very few keys, is you have a specific range where the spear is effective. Obviously, if you shoot at something too far away, you won't get to it. But then if you shoot at something too close, the spear won't have enough time to accelerate and you won't get a good hit. So uh, you want to be aiming at something that is 12 to 18 inches away or so. You want to make sure that you get the spear stretched all the way out. You want your hand all the way up to those tines or else you won't get full power out of the rubber band. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I take a couple of practice shots here at the spot in the dirt. And uh, after this, I feel like I'm pretty well set and good to go. So now we will switch back to our first dive right after my talk with Brady and my plunge into the water. All right, so Pensacola Bay, where we were, is pretty much a desert on the bottom, with the exception of a whole bunch of various artificial reef material that has been put down uh, by various agencies in Pensacola. So what we have here are essentially chicken coops. I think they are actually commercial chicken coops that were dropped to create little artificial reef structures and attract wildlife. And they do a great job of it. And the lionfish in particular love these structures. So we actually got a light on this guy and perfect sedentary lionfish. Let's bring in the spear and kapow. That was actually my very first lionfish kill. Pretty cool, pretty darn easy if I'm uh, gonna tell you the truth here. Now, there are only two on this coop, so we'll go ahead and get both of them. The lionfish don't tend to swim about in open sea. Oh, the big guy. Uh, they tend to really stick to uh, protective structures like, uh, like that chicken coop. So uh, let's take a look at what we've got here and then we'll do some more hunting and talk a bit more about the fish. All right, that was not the busiest coop ever, but we got two. One of them was actually pretty decent sized. Whew, let me get all this junk off and we'll take a closer look. All right, let's see what we've actually got here. They always look bigger. They always look bigger underwater. Yes. Screws. So one absolutely little tiny baby one. Still good because they won't reproduce. And one, what would you say? Is that a, uh, a four taco fish? That's, that's probably four tacos for sure, definitely. Easy. All right, I want to expand on a couple things. First off, lionfish really like protective structures. Uh, what we have here is a series of reef balls. These are artificial reef structures that have been uh, deployed around Pensacola Bay. There's a lot of this. Pensacola Bay naturally is sort of a barren desert underwater. Uh, and to encourage marine life and, and reef sort of things, they have done a lot of artificial reef development. Uh, some of it structures like this, some of it, uh, actually a lot of it is bridge rubble from a couple of large bridges that were damaged or destroyed in uh, various hurricanes. So the lionfish themselves, uh, they tend to, they're, they're very easy prey, if I'm going to be honest. They tend to just sit hiding around structures like this. And uh, you can shoot one and the ones next to it won't really pay you any mind and they'll just wait to get shot themselves. Uh, every once in a while, if if you take a shot at one and miss it, they can learn uh, individual fish. And so sometimes then they'll, you'll find one that's, that's been shot at and it will take off a bit when it sees divers coming. Uh, but in general, like you see here, I can just pick them off one by one and they sit there waiting for it. Uh, unfortunately, 
they have they are voracious predators and they will clean a reef completely of food um, they will eat things up to two-thirds their own size they reproduce extremely quickly um, very quick reproductive cycle um, for the animal and this is this looks like a lot of lionfish three or four or five on each of these reef balls but this is relatively sparse compared to the situation a couple years ago. Uh, fortunately, there has been quite a lot of interest in recreational divers helping to clean these things off of reefs, and it's done a lot to reduce their populations in the shallower depths, things up to uh, 160 feet, the recreational limit. By the way, this diving that we're doing here is all 80 to 100 feet deep, so still relatively deep. We don't have a whole lot of time on the bottom at these depths. Uh, but unfortunately, lionfish are quite happy living far, far deeper. Yeah, there's one that got away from me. He saw it was coming and took off, but they generally don't do that. Uh, unfortunately, below recreational depths, lionfish remain a huge scourge because there's a lot less, well, there aren't recreational divers down there um, hunting them. So what we do is we do usually do a little count. So as the, the lionfish drop in, we kind of do a count just to get, to get a good idea of how many we got. One, two, three. So big one. So five tacos. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven by my count. And one more little baby. Oh, a little tiny one. He still counts. Twelve. There you go, we got 12 more of that one. That's good. All right. Good job. So now, uh, basically fresh off the boat, uh, we are going to clean some of these guys. Absolutely. So these things, as you'll see, you have very white, flaky, almost translucent meat. Um, so it's really good. So like we talked about before, they are venomous. So you have to watch out when you're filleting. There's not really any special te technique on the way you have to fillet them for the venom, but you don't want to get poked. That's the biggest thing is make sure you don't get poked. But like we talked about on boat, there's actually, there's 13 venomous spines. And that's these ones up top on okay. the dorsal side. And if you look, the way these things work, we talked about it's like a rattlesnake, but in fact, they're not hollow like a rattlesnake. When you pull this skin back like that, oh, you can really nasty. see the translucent uh, spine. Wow. Yeah, so you can. unlike a rattlesnake, it's not hollow in the middle, but there's two grooves on the outside. And you can actually feel those grooves on the outside and you can take your finger. I can see them, yeah. Yep, yeah, and there's the venom. So you can see that venom right there that's housed within those grooves. And okay. that skin right there keeps it in. So when you get poked, it pulls that skin back like that and exposes those grooves and that's how you get, uh, get poked. So don't um, do that if you've got any open wounds on your hand. Absolutely. <laughs> so there's on the uh, pectoral fin, you can see, maybe I can get it to come out. Yeah, that yeah, right it's in this, the front. Yep, it's this front one right here. And the front one right here. Okay. And then there's three on the back. So these first three leading ones are also the venomous ones as well. Okay. So once you know where they're at, then you can know how to how to handle the fish. So this is the one that's got the venom. This these side fins right here, there's nothing wrong. I can touch these all day long. Okay. So I'm gonna take this knife, I'm gonna push this down here, grab a hole. And I'm just gonna, as always, let the knife do the work. So slowly come in. I'm gonna hit the, the, the backbone. I'm gonna turn my knife. Then I'm just gonna let that thing slide right down that backbone. So I get the tail. 
and now what I have is a nice piece of meat and you don't leave too much fish on there. So I'm gonna flop that thing over and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Again, these things are poking towards me now. So A, a longer knife, but I really wanna watch where my hand position is. So as I come around like that, I'm gonna be real careful to make sure I don't get my hand too far into there. You're pretty much a pro at this. I've done this a few thousand times. I have seen a bunch of other people, I've seen other people's YouTube videos where people will uh, use like a pair of scissors and clip off the spines first. So that's about our personal preference. You can do that. Uh, my philosophy is the less I have to interact with those spines, the better. I just make sure and pay attention, but there's, other, there's no wrong way to do it. So if you feel better cutting off those spines and alleviating that issue of maybe getting poked, that's fine too. Okay. There's nothing wrong. So basically what I have is, is the empty carcass. Now, there's people out that are making jewelry out of these things. They're making jewelry out of the tails, out of the fins, and little earrings, and necklaces, and cufflinks. Um, so we also often cut cut off some of the parts of the, of the fish and try to utilize the entire fish. So one of the cool things is this has gone from being just an invasive pest to actually being a commercially exploited species in a number of ways. And that's Not what... Just Right, and we're trying to, you know, trying to encourage that market. Um, obviously, if we can create a market for it, you create a, a commercially viable fish that now it gives people a reason to get them out of the ocean. Right. So I'm just going to take this rib cage out right here, and now I've got a nice, beautiful fillet of fish. Nice. We will uh, deal with it a little while. All right. Let me All try right. my hand. Again. All right. Sounds good. Let's get another one. I'm left-handed, okay. so I'm going to turn this guy around, right? So at, at, one, at some point you're going to do this side, so it doesn't matter. Yes. Very All right, so be careful with these guys. Uh -huh. These guys, I don't have to worry about. Correct. And I am going to cut right about there. Yep. Down to all. There you go. All right. Turn your knife. Nice. skin. And just slowly... Don't saw, but pull through. There you go, now you got it. So a lot of you guys have done all sorts of like pole fishing for like normal fish. I've never done any fishing at all. So this is totally new to me. Cool. There you go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Not exactly the world's prettiest filet, but, but that is a filet. It is a filet, exactly. That's some meat. I left a fair bit on there. That's all right. Okay. I'm gonna slap it over. over. Although it's very thin, it's very tough. I noticed so that, So I can yeah. just really just move my knife all the way down it. He's rescuing my play. I don't know if there's any <laughs> rescue in this thing, but we're going to try. <laughs> Front of life is nuggets. This is how life is nuggets. Yeah, that is, uh, I've turned a three taco fish into a one taco fish. Did that for sure. But you know what? The cool thing here is you've done a good thing just by killing it, and the meat is a bonus. It's definitely a bonus. Looking forward to it. All right. Sounds good. Let me try one more. Let me see yeah, if I can absolutely. redeem myself a little bit. Right about there. Right there. That? Yeah. That's better. There we go. There, yeah. There you go. Oh, look, it's like a pro right there. All right. That's nicer. There <laughs> we go. So I still left a fair bit on here, I think. But, but you know what? For the second time in your life, it's not too bad. <laughs> I'll take it.
district. Perfect. Ooh, that's gonna hey. be some good eating right there. All right. gas now so this is the egg sac of a lionfish um, there could be anywhere between 30 and 50 thousand eggs inside of that sack right there and one of the problems with the way they've been able to spread so fast is this floats so as they spawn this thing floats up to the top and rides through the surface now this uh, this um, gelatinous nastiness here also has some of the venom inside of it. So it discourages things from eating it. Um, so after about 30 days, these things float around on the surface and the little lionfish drop out. They drop down and that's where they find their home basically the rest of their lives. So they'll stay within usually four to five meters of where they land. <laughs> Saki Cafe with Lion, who is the owner and the chef here, who has been working with, you've been working with lionfish for years oh, now. Oh, for years, right? yeah. And you serve this lionfish on the menu in a variety of, uh, of different preparations as a standard part of the restaurant menu. Yes, okay. it's, it's a special thing people will to try. You are the man to see in Pensacola for lion. For lion, yeah. All right, so we're gonna try you're going to show us something with a complete fish, and I think we're also doing something with a fillet as well. Let me try it. Um, let me get it. So we do is, um, the pan really sharp right here, we just start a decision. Or we can leave it only for, for decoration, it's pretty, but sometimes if you serve, you know, you have to be two here, okay, two here, cut, and three here. You don't want to serve someone a spine. Uh, spine, yeah, really bad. Get stuck. You're gonna serve this, clean up your cut, two here, three here. Or we can just fry, try it on uh, the whole thing, you will see. Some Sometimes, if you like it with the skin, our skin really tough. So, what we serve right here, we clean the skin. You just get a line up. Let's slip, yeah, because they have uh, still press, slippery. And then what happened, just peel the skin like this. This is a professional at work who has clearly done this. Really tough. When Once you fry this one, it's so hard to eat, yeah. And then just peel it. Looking good so far. Is that just plain flour? Just plain flour, or purpose plain flour. fried fishes and I think we're also doing one uh, taking some of the fillets for sashimi.
so the fillets that are turning into sashimi are going to be presented with the rest of that particular fish. So it doesn't have to be this fancy. You can do some grilled lionfish and some tacos, but. Ooh, spicy. Mm. It is really mild. It's really good. All the better for knowing that we shot it just a couple hours ago. I haven't even had time for my hair to dry. But you were saying the heat of the, the cooking process denatures the toxin. So, so it's a, yeah, it's a protein-based neurotoxin, and the heat absolutely denatures it. So you can actually, uh, once we get done, we can use those spines to get all the little bits out of our teeth with uh, no problem. Uh, no one told me I also had to master chopsticks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So good. Really hot. Yeah. <laughs> ah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a little hot. Uh, still warm. a bit warm inside. So, so most people drink hot sake, but this is actually a cold, unfiltered sake. Also affectionately known as milk. <laughs> uh, almost no. never had sake, so this is going to be brand new and what could be more appropriate? Sashimi. Absolutely. So it is tradition that you never pour your own sake. So, I will so pass. you're not drinking it? I am. So I'll pass the bottle to you and let you uh, fill my cup. There you are. Alright. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright. Kampai. That. Kampai. Kampai. That's good. Yeah. This is the payoff. <laughs> Although, frankly, like, this isn't a payoff. The whole thing was fun. It was a lot of fun. The and diving is food. Yeah, the diving is fun. The shooting the fish is fun. Okay, cleaning the fish, maybe not quite so much fun. <laughs> but, yeah, this has been fantastic. Great. Glad, Glad you enjoyed you. it. Thank yeah. you very much for setting this up. Glad you enjoyed it. No. Come on down. There you go. Uh, what's you run? Ocean, Ocean Strike Team. Ocean Strike Team. It's uh, www.oceanstriketeam.org. Come check us out. We'll teach you how to hunt lionfish. We'll bring you as part of our ecotourism trips. We actually come and have the lions prepared like this. So uh, you can come and, and shoot and eat just like uh, Ian did. And we'll have a grand old time. <laughs> I'd like to give a huge thanks to everyone who made this possible. Chef Wyan at Cafe Saki, uh, Brady Hale and Ocean Strike Team for helping set it up and teaching me what the heck I need to be doing, as well as, of course, Captain Andy and our dive master Adam with Nayui Dive Tours. They were Everyone involved here was fantastic. Uh, and if you're looking to do any of this in Pensacola, I highly recommend all of them. Also, this is not just a recreational or ecological trip. Uh, this is one in a series of trips practicing our underwater filming capabilities, getting the right equipment, and getting set up to hopefully be able to film some underwater firearms for you guys. So if you know anyone who has access to, say, an HKP-11, send them my way. That's the ultimate goal of the underwater program here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.